Welcome back to another episode of Excalibur CCG TV's Talking Comics. We are your hosts. I am Randy. I am Mark. And we are here to talk to you about new comics that will be on the shelves for Wednesday, March 21st, 2018. That is indeed nearly three months done with this uh, year. And that's crazy. It is crazy to think about. Uh, Zoom. Hopefully you guys have your taxes almost ready. If you haven't done them so already. Uh, we know some people that haven't. <laughs> uh, if you are looking to visit our shop, you need to, uh, and you don't know how to get here already, you need to go to our website, ExcaliburCCG.com, or our Facebook page where you can find both directions and phone numbers uh, if you just want to chat with us and hear our sweet, sweet voices. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are also going to find out, if you didn't know already as well, that uh, we have two locations. One that is in uh, Texarkana, Texas, and the other that is here, Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, that's where you can find Mark and I. Yes. So, I just want you to know. On Thursday. Yeah, Friday. that's right, buddy. I'm just going to talk the whole time doing this. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a big announcement, and that is... Mega Sale! A Mega Sale that is almost here. Almost. It's the first week of April. Yep. That is the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. That is, starts on a Thursday, in which you get some pretty good sales. And it goes through Sunday, in which they get ridiculously good. But you're going to have to fight with a whole lot of people to get to it. Yep. So, and your stuff might already be gone. And it might already be gone. So be prepared. Uh, the the biggest uh, sales price percentage is going to be on your back issues, but not the variants. So right. uh, be aware. Read the signs. Ask for help on that. There, there are signs everywhere <laughs> yeah. in the store during this time. Sunday but, is buy or cry. Yes, absolutely. And now... Uh, Help us help you, help us help you uh, with that. Everything in the store will be some percentage off. Uh, we had someone asking about, I think, the graphic novels. Yep. Yes, they will be a percentage off as Board well. games, role playing game, graphic novels, dice, miniatures, yep. cards, everything in the store. Candy and Cokes included. Yes, absolutely. So, be prepared. Get that list ready. Um, be like Batman. Be prepared. Be like, yeah, a Boy Scout <laughs> named Batman. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to... Double prepared. Absolutely. You, you know everything that could possibly happen. Uh, there aren't a lot of number ones hitting the uh, shelves this week, but we have a handful that we're going to talk about here. Mark is going to lead us off with that. Alrighty. Okay, so this is the first of the... Uh... I guess Young Animal. Uh, no, not the first. No. The third. Third. Came out. Third. Third. Day of um, Eternity. Okay. That's right. Cave Carson has an Interstellar Eye. Number one. Uh, I feel like I just did a product placement with that. <laughs> I, I should turn it away so that they don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Jonathan Rivera and Michael Avon Omi. Um, after a year of multiverse hopping and fighting in the Milk Wars, returning to a normal life of digging and cave diving just is not the same for Explorer Gabe Carson. Sure, he's got his podcast and he's got his family and that cybernetic eye, but reminiscing about times gone by isn't the same as living. Don't we know that? Luckily for Cave Carson and his daughter Chloe, they're about to get sucked into an all-new adventure, literally, when they go spelunking in a black hole. But what caused this black hole to appear? To appear and what's its connection to the intergalactic music music sensation Star Atom? I don't know who that is. I don't either. It's uh, take off the Dazzler, though. I don't know. Maybe. 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 Dash Rip Rock. Dash Rip Rock. Pull that one out of left field. Uh, from Lion Forge, we get Infinity 8 number 1. This has nothing to do with the Infinity stuff that's coming out <laughs> from Marvel. So, <laughs> please be aware. Name is co completely coinkadinkle. Yes, not a tie-in. Uh, it is written by Louis Trondheim and the Zep. <laughs> Robert Plant. 
Jimmy Page, right? Oh, no, it's uh, it's actually uh, a legendary guy, somebody else, so uh, not him, <laughs> not them. <laughs> and uh, it has art by Dominique Bertel. If you're not familiar with Lion Forge by now, a lot of their stuff is uh, European comics that are uh, adapted for, uh, translated for American standards, and uh, they have some pretty good stuff. Yep. This actually sounds pretty cool. There's a city-sized space cruiser that runs into a field of debris uh, between galaxies, and it's up to the ship's top eight security agents to figure out how to cir circumnavigate it. Investigating eight different parallel times, the agents uncover multiple plots that together could spell the end of the ship's massive interspecies population. It's uh, They're calling this pulpy sci-fi uh, with parallel dimensions, tongue-in-cheek, think early, original, uh, heavy metal with that, and it is going to be three issue story arc, or three issue arcs that focus on, I think, three, eight, or three of the agents at a time, or something like that, so, um, sounds like fun to me. I, I, I like space, I like pulp, uh, and that just is kind of a unique concept with the multiple dimensions there so cool i'm excited very cool who was that from I... uh lion forge lion forge okay all right uh next up for me is from marvel comics and it is iron man hong kong heroes number one this is from howard wong art by wong and justice like like uh two wongs don't make a I was going to go with Doctor Strange's uh, companion one. <laughs> That's right. He has stepped out of the comic and has written one. Uh, dimensions, baby. Yep. All right. The Marvel Universe story of Disney's newest and coolest attraction. Oh, okay. Stark Expo Hong Kong, the place to unveil the latest and greatest in cutting-edge technology. But even as Tony Stark and Wendy Wong introduce the... So there's a Wendy Wong in the book, and it's written by one. Oh my God. Ah, there one. <laughs> That's right. Uh, introduce the newest futuristic tech in the Stark Emergency Response Exosuit. An evil from the past strikes. The sinister Baron Mordo, Mordo has teamed up with Artem Zola in a diabolical merging of next-gen technology and ancient dark magic. They'll take a titanic team-up of Avengers to protect the Expo, but who will wear the prototype exosuit? I'm guessing Wendy Wong. <laughs> And it, will it be enough to send off this lethally evil force featuring Captain America, Black Widow, Hulk, Black Panther, and the introduction of an all-new armored hero, Wendy Wong, in the prototype suit, I'm guessing. Um, you won't want to miss this one. I'm, I'm totally going to say what was going through my mind while you said that. You were talking about all the Wongs there. And I was thinking, oh, it's just like Smith's. It's like, it's like when John Smith <laughs> teamed up with Brigham Young Smith to write about Jesus Smith. <laughs> That's not right. No. <laughs> but it's funny. So, uh, for the sake of funny, I'm going to say it. Okay. Um, we have next, I'm, I'm giving you all the, the really small press ones here, uh, from Aspen... Uh, well, they, they've changed their names. It's Aspen MLE, MLT Inc. Uh, um, I guess that has to do with Michael Turner. Um, Could be. Uh, there. Michael Lewis Turner. I don't know like what the Mutton Lettuce and Tomato. <laughs> Mutton <family>. Lettuce and Tomato <laughs> Inc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the, the 15th year anniversary for Aspen Comics, uh, which, well, what was known as Aspen Comics. And so they have been, uh, over the past couple of months, giving you a primer for a series and the number one the same day. So that's what we're getting this uh, time as well. We have Journey, J-I-R-N-I, -I, Primer, uh, written by J.T. Kroll, longtime yeah. uh, Aspen writer, and uh, V. Kenneth Marion will be doing the Oh, it was art. the great V. Kenneth Marion doing the art on this book. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's an old MST thing. <laughs> Was not expecting that. So this is uh, perfect for new readers and old readers alike. Um, and you're going to find out about the return of Jinri. This really says nothing about it other than it is a primer. Introducing you get you. to the... And then I get to the number one, this is volume three, number one, in which we follow Era, 
through a fantastical world of high adventure. So you're going to find out who Journey is and Era and everything else within In that. Between, yes. Wow, that really said absolutely nothing there. The, well, the primers are 25 cents. They're so. 25 cents. That's a big thing that you need to know. And then I think it's a regular $3.99 for the number one. Um, they do pretty art there. They're fun stories. It's it's just very um, popcorn, yeah. lighthearted with yeah. the Aspen Studios books if you have not checked them out before. Coolness. All right. Uh, next up from me, from Boom Studios. Oh, it's Boom Studios. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did that with... If anybody had three names or like initials, they would oh. do that. <laughs> if they were like directing it or something. Are we going back to like Jane and Dan and everybody there? Or how far back are we going with that? Uh, for, right for those SNL? No, 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 no. that was uh, MST. Oh, MST. Oh, yeah. my bad. Yeah. Okay, MST. Totally different. Yes, totally different. Uh, this is Lucy Dreaming, number one, from Max Bemis and Michael Dialysis. Dial. <laughs> <laughs> dial Y for Nass, Dial Linus, Dialinus. Sounds dial. like a sounds like a Greek mythological hero. <laughs> dial Linus. Uh, Max Bemis, Moon Knight writer and lead singer of Say Anything. And oh, I didn't know that. Michael, yeah, he's, he's got a good following from the woods. He's from the woods. Him and Justin Timberlake are from the woods. <laughs> Justin Timberlake. That's his new album. Oh, Man is it? Oh, okay. Or something. And he's like standing in a cornfield, which is not really <laughs> Whatever. Close enough. Yeah. For a city boy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they present a sweeping coming of age fantasy about living your dreams. Literally. In her dreams, Lucy is the hero of all her favorite stories, living each night as a grand adventure. These journeys will teach her more about herself and the real world than she ever expected. Including, I hope, that nothing, not everything revolves around her because everything seems to be about her in this. So maybe she's going to learn a harsh lesson. <laughs> harsh we'll, lesson. We'll see. And I get to stick with the smaller press. Although, we should announce that maybe some of these smaller press guys like Boom and Dynamite are being looked at as more serious uh, uh, studios uh, because they are moving up into the major section on the, um, on the previews, on the previews catalog. catalog. So. Yep. Uh, this one happens to be Dynamite. Uh, Pathfinder, if you enjoy the, the Pathfinder uh, role-playing game. Pathfinder Spiral of Bones, number one, five-issue series. Crystal Frazier teams up with Eric Mona on the writing. And Tom Garcia is going to join Diego Galindo on cool, the man. art. I do. I, I like that. Uh, Eric so, Mona is actually one of the game developers. Oh, okay. So. I was kind of surprised not to see uh, Jim Zub. <laughs> writing because he's done so many of the different ones he does, I think he's kind of sticking to the D&D ones right now oh okay but uh, as you plunge as the Pathfinders plunge into the history and mysteries below Care Maga the no hold barred city of strangers Valeros uh, Valeros 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 plunges far Whoa. deeper into the great beyond defending his immortal soul in the courts of the dead from Pathfinder artist Crystal Frazier comes this scintillating <laughs> okay, tell of life, death, oh, and what lingers when we're gone. Uh, plus, there's going to be a Starfinder backup. So, if you have been... I mean, story. Story, yes. Uh, so, if you've been enjoying uh, or excited about everything with Starfinder, this is the first Starfinder story that you're going to get. That's everything I have. What about you? I have one more. Tell us about it. Aren't you happy? I, I'm ecstatic. Uh, Weapon X or Weapon H from uh, Marvel Comics number one by Greg Pak and Corey Smith. Uh, this is the Wolverine Hulk hybrid monster thing that was created during the, with the weird little crystals, of mutants of mass destruction story. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, Weapon X program has done it again. Woo! At the cost of their own destruction, they've completed their biggest and possibly most dangerous experiment yet. With the strength of the Hulk and the rage and claws of Wolverine comes Weapon H. It's been some time since Weapon H escaped and destroyed his creators. Now our hero <laughs> is on the run as he tries to escape from his mysterious past and seclude himself from the rest of society, leave Hulk alone. 
But when a new kind of Wendigo threatens the lives of others, will Weapon X be able to shirk his responsibility? Does any of his humanity remain? We shall see. So with the new Hulk Wolverine comes a new Wendigo. Yes, absolutely. Why not? Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> uh, beyond those, uh, there's lots of other books that will be on the shelf there. And, absolutely. Uh, Damnation's still going on. Yes. Um, Else? There's no infinity this week. So. No, get a break from that. Yeah. Uh, get a break from Dark Knight. No metal, no anything else. Just damnation, I guess. Going on right now. Yeah. Uh, and there's a little bit of comic news that we'd like to share with you guys. Uh, everybody seemed to have been uh, under the impression that there was going to be this Action Comics 1000 hardcover that was going to be coming out. And that's partially the fault of DC because they named their Superman Celebration graphic or, or graphic novel hardcover Action 1000. They've changed the name and it just is, you know, Action Celebration, I think, now. Um, and they are now giving us the hardcover in September. So you will be able to purchase that. It's going to be a deluxe edition, much like what they did with the uh, DC uh, Rebirth. Uh, one shot where they later did a deluxe edition hardcover of that. So, uh, that's, confused? Yeah. <laughs> it, it will exist. It didn't exist when everybody's asking for it. Now that we've explained it to everybody, uh, it, it, it's going to exist. <laughs> uh, tell us who's writing Justice League or what's going on with Justice League. Oh, well, Justice League, <laughs> the, the big uh, Scott Snyder shakeup coming up here shortly. Um, when it relaunches, Assuming with the new number one? Yes, it will. Uh, Scott Snyder and uh, Jim Chung. He's done mostly Marvel stuff. Jump from, the yeah, from Marvel. And he's going to be the ongoing, or at least at least for the first arc, mm -hmm. um, of this new Justice League team that's spinning out of Scott Snyder's Justice League shakeup. So, um, what did we see on the cover? It was, you know, the standards Wonder Woman, the Trinity, uh, Flash, Flash, Aquaman, Aquaman, Cyborg. Cyborg, but... We have Hot Girl and a Green Lantern, but it's not Simon Baz or Jessica Cruz. It's Jonathan Stewart, John Stewart. Right. He's back, as the, I guess, as the Guardian of Earth, maybe. Or maybe he's just joining the Justice League. I'm not, I'm not sure that. where, what's going on with that. Uh, they see him back then. And we get uh, uh, Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. Joining in with right. that. So that's always good, and Chase yes. will be happy about that. Uh, other news that they've announced for DC is that in June we will be getting a Hawkman ongoing series, uh, and that is going to be written by Robert Venditti. And for a certain extent, for how long, I don't know, we'll have Brian Hitch on board as the artist. Uh, hopefully, he's already got like 10 issues drawn <laughs> so that, that it will come out on time. Thank God he's not writing it. And yes, the other big news is. We are getting the second batch of the DC Hanna-Barbera one-shots. Uh, that's going to be, uh, let's see here, Aquaman and Jabberjaws. And and you'll be able to see creative teams. We just want to let you guys know kind of who's who they're going to have there. They're going to have a backup in that that looks like Captain Caveman, Shazam, Spectre, and Shazam. Oh, Spectre too. Yeah, the wizard Shazam is what they're saying. So. Ah. Uh, there's the Black Lightning Hong Kong Fui uh, team up that seems to be more of a 70s style team up with them. And the backup story in that will be Jason Blood and the Funky Phantom. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Uh, the, great. the Flash and Speed Buggy. We'll, we'll get that one. I don't see uh, another team up there. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. And then the Super Sons get to team up with Dynamite. That should be pretty awesome. That's going to be great. Uh, it's, I, I just want to see how Damien interacts with Dynamite. And Blue Falcon. Well, well, you know, he has his dog as well. Oh, that's uh, true. So yeah. we get to, you know, we'll see if, if that dog has helped him acclimate properly. <laughs> so uh, a lot of fun stuff with those and it looks like the, only the first two have backups to them. That, okay. that could change and they could That's add possible. backups later as they get yeah. closer to the release date. That'll be sometime in the summer uh, with that June, July 
We don't know yet. Good stuff. But uh, now it's time for our new segment. Back Issues of the Week. Absolutely. Uh, I guess I'll start it off. Do it. I am sticking with my old school Marvel theme. Um, this is a one of those kind of anthology books that they came out with back in the 70s. Um, this was the third issue, and this is actually the first one I bought off the rack. Um, this is uh, Supernatural Thrillers, number three. Um, the first six issues of, or so of this series were adaptions, literary adaptions. They did It from Theodore Sturgeon. They did, I think, The Headless Horseman in one of them. Um, but it was like the first few issues, and then it moved over to um, The Living Mummy was like the regular feature in it for however else long it lasted, not too many, and yeah. worth the most. So this is uh, Valley of the Worm. It is an adaption of a Robert E. Howard story, one of Robert E. Howard's non-Conan stories, um, sword and sorcery. Um, good story, kind of got some reincarnation elements in it, but uh, it's uh, Jerry Conway and Roy Thomas doing the writing and Gil Kane on the art. And uh, it's not that bad, 10 bucks. 10 bucks, and if you come in on the sale, it's cheaper. Yes. Um, but very fun story, very cool story, a lot of monster fighting and this guy's actually uh, a Viking, even though he doesn't really look like it. <laughs> but it's a fun story. Monsters, swords, sorcery, good stuff. Something that uh, Robert, Robert Howard. Howard's very well known for. Oh, yeah. Uh, for me, uh, I'm still going a little newer here than uh, what Marvel's, uh, what Mark has done with his Marvel books. Uh, DC Comics 52. This came out of the uh, identity crisis and, and spun right into this. Tiny footprints. <laughs> Tiny footprints, absolutely. Uh, it, this was a, a one book a week for the whole year, 52 books in all. And it gave us the powerhouse writing team of Grant Morrison, Jeff Johns, Mark Waite, and somebody by the name of Greg Rucka. Uh, what I loved about this series was it it gave us a lot of lesser known characters, uh, focus on them, and and really spun them out into heroes that were, I mean, they'd never been given that much attention before. You had a, a Booster Gold storyline uh, where, you know, he was kind of hated by everybody uh, throughout the story. You had the uh, demise, well, what was going to be the demise of the original question and Renee Montoya taking up the role there. Um, you had, we're dealing with um, the death of Sue Dibney, and so Ralph was having to, to go through his bit. You, you had, um, who was it, uh, Adam Strange and um, Animal Man and uh, Starfire teaming up together with the book. There was a Will Magnus story. They, they had like five or six stories. There was a Black Adam story within here as well that each week they kind of focus on the, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there in the books, or one book may just be dedicated solely to that um, character. But it was just something where I think is one of the most concise, tightly put together uh, weekly books that they've done. Uh, they've tried it since, and I don't know that anything's ever quite lived up to it. But yeah, that's it's true. It's got a three ninety nine price tag on this, and most of the books. I, I think there's the the one of them is the first appearance of uh, Kane, uh, Batwoman. Yeah. So it may be a little bit more, but it's not that bad. So uh, beautiful J.G. Jones covers uh, with this book. And I think I don't I don't know if they really had a standard artist throughout. Batista, Batista, the the guy that's his last name I forget his first name, but he did some art in it, and there were some other people. But uh, just a fun read, and it's one of those things when you don't have Wonder Woman or Superman or Batman, you get to see these other characters shine. Uh, and I mean I I've preached that from the for how long here that I like seeing all these other characters. So yep. if I want to read Superman or Batman or Wonder Woman, they have two or three books dedicated to them. At least. At least, yeah. I, or I can go pick up Justice League. And there you go. with something like this, it, it really focused on new characters. Uh, Lex Luthor was another one in this. So 
fun pretty much if not the whole run uh, pretty much close to it that's like Mark said with his book you can pick this up and sell for next to nothing and just have an excellent story cool awesome man. so two good ones and uh, I already have something in mind for next week I just need to write it down so I don't <laughs> forget uh, that's always the big problem is trying to remember which one we're juggling there yep yep so that is basically going to do it for our show here um, let me go through the the whole yes sir is there something you'd like to add just sigh just, just <laughs> big <deep. laughs> that oh, okay. you were twerking what? <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to uh, get that on camera later for you guys. Uh, or not. Or not. Uh, Breaking don't. the internet. <laughs> That's right. Everybody would just go home. No yeah. more fighting on the internet. But actually, let's put it on there so that happens. Yes, peace on earth. That's right. Um, remember to go to our Facebook page, our, our website, ExcaliburCCG.com. Uh, you can add books to your pull list. Uh, you can see what's coming out that week uh, or that month even. And um, just remember to like, share, subscribe, comment on the video. Lots of stuff to talk about this week. Um, share your books that you're picking up. Share uh, the back issues, your thoughts on our back issues. And share uh, what your thoughts are on the DC comic book news. And Sunny and Share. I don't know what that means. Thank you, Riggs. <laughs> that one was a bad joke. Uh, so Go back to twerking. Yes. <laughs> Anything else you need to add here? Okay, we're going to go back to twenty. Okay. So until next time, guys, read great comics, and we will see you next time.